stats on the list. Um, we have an example as to why potentially why some people aren't fans of one Brendan Shaw, who I've mentioned on this podcast a few times, if you're familiar with it. Um, Brendan, of course, is you know one of the hosts of The Fire and the Kid, which has now been changed to a, a, a talk show, what is it, comedy podcast with him as a main guest and then a revolving um, door of co-hosts, which is now you know just essentially been built down to Just Wolf because no one knows in LA wants to be anywhere near Brendan because he's got COVID from what he said anyway, based on his podcast with Bert Crash, I'm not throwing name, dirt in his name. But, you know, um, pretty popular podcast. He does his thing. But unfortunately, over the last few years, his popularity has sort of waned with his fan base, it seems like, right? Of course, there's some detractors, some haters. I'm just, you know, going to always pick apart what he does. But it seems like for the most part, a lot of the fan base have kind of reacted negatively to the evolution of Brendan Shaw, which is maybe similar to the Tana Mongo, Emma Chamberlain thing that I mentioned before. I don't really think it's the same, but it might be. Because I did, I, I do remember when it first started, especially when it, during the Fox era, I think that might have been when I kind of jumped on board. Because, yeah, they, did, they were on Fox for a while. Um, it was a fun show, right? Fun show. Brendan Shaw, The Fire and the Kid. Brendan's a fighter, ex MMA guy, or at the time he was still fighting in the UFC, doing it alongside Brian Kellen, a stand up comedian, very experienced, um, part of the LA scene, best friend to Joe Rogan, even though Joe Rogan won't mention his name again since he's been convicted of this, you know, or since he's been um, accused of sexual assault and whatever it may be but i digress really fun podcast and then i don't know what happened over time maybe they just became rich off of it they just got lazy um they started to hate their own fan base or maybe the actual turning point if you think about it, it might have been that ama they did do you remember that um ask me anything on reddit that was an absolute shit show and i think that was maybe an insight for them into what their fan base actually thinks of them because i don't think they actually knew they had no idea legit, legitimately. You know, Brendan always says, I don't really comment and you never believe it. I think they generally didn't have any idea, clue, that there was a small community of people, fan base, that kind of thought, you know, Brendan was a bit of a, you know, whatever he is and uh, he wasn't letting Brian shine. It's funny because people said they weren't, let, you know, people said at the time, Brendan was sort of holding, not holding back, but Brendan was sort of like, you know, um, bullying brian on the show not letting him finish sentences which is true not letting him finish his stories which is true and just essentially kind of you know um treating him a bit like an employee which is true as well but now that they've both they've each got their own show brian, brian callan has had his show behind a paywall right um what's that the kind of report that's you know people haven't necessarily reacted that well to and you've seen kind of seen his um in deficiencies or sort of kind of his shortcomings and his personality and then you've seen brian brian on the other side sorry brendan on the other side with josh wolf you've also seen how he can be on his own you've kind of i've hoped people have come to the realization that they're actually better off together as toxic not toxic as as annoying as they can be together they're better they're far better off under the banner of firing a kid than they are on their own sort of like you know platforms or their own shows um especially if you've seen the recent clips of brian Callan, you know essentially talking without a microphone screaming about racial injustice and affirmative action and stuff you're like god almighty man how the mighty have fallen but yeah this clip is a good example as to why maybe brennan isn't liked by the some of the fan base um it's him basically um you know uh ranting about e-bikes um he just recently got into bmxing i uh, sorry mountain biking and he's obviously launched his thick boy bike club merch stuff that he does um which is aimed at i guess bigger dudes who like to cycle which i didn't even think that was a thing to be in a group because i think bikes you know everyone rides bikes it doesn't really about big or small but hey he always he's really good at this guy at kind of getting a niche um you know riding the fuck out of it you know no pun intended and sort of making merch to sort of profit off it as well and his fans seem to like it so you know i got no problem with that but I guess the mountain bike thing is funny because it's an it's a sort of like an encapsulation representative of just, you know, sometimes I don't know what it is, is it lack of research or just lack of kind of wanting to get in, you know, because I when it's with me and I get into things, you know, you want to research what you're getting into, maybe find a community online, maybe read some articles, watch some videos, you know, pick up the lingo, wherever it may be, right? And then sort of just kind of abide by it and kind of, you know, slowly but surely build up on your knowledge base as you go through so here's is him ranting about e-bikes having no knowledge of mountain biking prior to this anyway he reads a couple of comments from fans saying e-bikes are you know gay and that you shouldn't ride them he also rants about it and kind of agrees and then it's intercut with pictures or videos or of him actually you know scurrying down the hill on an e-bike as it whistles by him you know it's just like why would you go out of your way to just to be so disparaging about e-bikes, not even knowing anything about the biking community or mountain bike community in the first place? And then um, 
that further down the line decide to get yourself an e-bike right or you know get given a free one by specialized um which is good don't get me wrong do your thing and then now kind of you you know turn back around and say oh yeah you know e-bikes there's nothing wrong with them it's like bizarre human being man very very bizarre but again another another in uh, interpretation as to why he maybe isn't the most liked guy on the platform at the moment you bike you're basically on a motorcycle you get a motorcycle dude you're not gonna work out and you're not sweating dude i see <laughs> these boys on the e-bikes just i mean they they all look like armadillos and spandex they look like <laughs> shit and they just fly by me on these e-bikes and it's frustrating man because they you know they're basically on fucking electric motorcycles just going right up the mountain yeah and I post about them, like, got all these e-bikes past me. And real mountain bike people are like, those, are, those aren't cool, man. Those are weak. Those are frowned upon in the community of mountain biking. And, and, they're, not, and they're not cool. Um, I've, I've cycled, what, for the, most of my life, especially to work back and forth and, you know, fixed gears, 26-inch uh, BMXs and all that stuff. The only people in my area that ride e-bikes are Deliveroo and Uber Eats drivers. That's it, right? And they have every reason to, right? You know, jumping around, going to point A to point B. It probably helps if you're trying to get as much money as you can out of these um, delivery companies to ride an e-bike. But going to work and then having an e-bike zip past you, especially the the absolute wankers who cycle really, act like they're cycling, but they're not. They're just, you know, they essentially got their their um, hand on the throttle or pressing the button and just speeding across, but they're pretending to pretend like they're cycling and they're literally speeding past you it's bad enough when you're in a fixed gear fixed fixed bike and somebody on the 12 speed you know racing bike comes by you and they're just sort of like clicking through the gears and just kind of laying you right outstripping you every kind of every kind of two pedals that you do is six or seven to theirs it's even worse with e-bikes so the e-bike thing is odd i don't really get it maybe it's an american thing going on trails on an e-bike seems very bizarre and part of the fun of going on a trail on a mountain bike suspension bike is sweating your ass off trying to get uphill maneuvering down here on a bike using your brakes using your pedals balancing pivoting off of stuff like you know that's part of the joy of riding in hills and we don't even have that many hills here in the uk right but whenever i, I was doing that back in the day going you know in some of the marshes and stuff and hanging out in some of the parks and you know running or going through some of the back you know the back roads that you have in parks and stuff that's sort of like laid out for bikes and whatever that regard that's part of the fun you wouldn't want to just be speeding up and down it like with no effort on a bike and again part of the reason of getting a bike in my opinion is the say is the kind of the health benefits right of cycling actually cycling right on the actual pedal bike so getting an e-bike makes no sense in that regard honestly unless you're an uber eats delivery driver why do you have one it isn't cool and again i'm not that plugged into the community but i know just from riding bikes myself that that is the case and I wouldn't kind of suddenly change my mind because Specialized decided to. Because if I had a prior interest Specialized, I'd just get a really nice bike, right? Get them to custom make a really nice bike for you, maybe adjust the seat to maybe accommodate um, you being a bigger dude and get bigger pedals, maybe a bust, and you could essentially sell that as a thick boy bike, in it Because, you know, it's essentially being customized to your liking. But an e-bike, it's like... The reason why people frown on e-bikes because you and he's right, for the most part that i've seen see look he's changing his mind already because <laughs> he doesn't it's too hard <laughs> um on the trails is most of the e-bike people their cardio sucks they just rely on the bike to get them up the hills and then they want to go down so you're not i guess you're not it's kind of the cheap way to go as far as like you're not earning the the down earning the down is that even a phrase earning the down is that a thing with my command by people? I don't even know if that's a thing. If it is, I would never use it. It sounds absolutely R-worded. Um, but hey, man, interesting dude, isn't it? Again, I, it's all good changing your mind about stuff and, you know, having a, you know, whatever change of perspective because you're suddenly doing the activity. But to rail on e-bikes so hard when you have no experience riding them, you just go and go for what someone says and you don't want to seem uncool and in purpose you're getting one just so you can be like, hey, I'm counterculture. It's just so odd. He does that quite often, isn't it? It's just a bizarre thing to do. But again, I guess he's sort of leaning into this sort of um, internet, not villain, but, you know, Chad douche, whatever it is. Right? He's leaning into it a lot, but interesting way to go about things. Again, um, big up Brenda regardless. Go buy your Thick Boy merch if you're into that kind of stuff and keep it moving, in it, I guess.